Well, good, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, we're just going to give it a quick minute for everyone to join this morning. We've had an amazing turnout again for Wednesday webinar Wednesdays. Um, but as you log in, if you can just uh, make a quick comment, uh, let, let us know you're here or click the wave icon on the bottom right hand side of the screen just to show that you can hear us OK and see us OK. Amazing. Getting lots of thumbs up. That's great. All right, well, let's get started. Uh, thank you for joining today's Travel Oregon webinar. We know it's a, an extremely challenging time for our industry and are grateful for your time today. Obviously, some good news of potential trans-Tasman bubbles yesterday with our prime minister in New Zealand meeting with uh, the cabinet. So we're super excited that, that could be a first step to greater things. Uh, before we know it, we'll be back selling the USA and of course, Oregon. If you haven't met me before, I'm Corey Marshall, and I'm fortunate to be here today with our account director all the way from Portland, Oregon, Mr. Greg Eckert. Um, today is a great opportunity to extend your knowledge for when we are back selling those USA holiday experiences. I've been fortunate to work with Travel Oregon for 11 years and spent a ton of time traveling around the state. From what you're going to see today, I've been fortunate to hike it, bike it, ride it, ski it, family holiday it, craft beer tour it, and road rally it. Um, after today's webinar, both Greg and I are here to help you build your Oregon itineraries. Please, if you have any questions as we go along, a little bit of housekeeping, um, type them into the comment box on the right-hand side, and we'll answer these as we go or at the end. Um, if you're part of our Sell Your Way to the USA incentive program with American Airlines, you'll earn an extra point today. If you have not registered, you can still do so. We'll follow up with all the details after this webinar. I see a lot of familiar faces um, in, the, in the audience today and know that many of you are Sell Your Way participants, so we thank you for that. Um, before we start today, and similar to other webinars, we want to ask you a couple of questions about Oregon. Um, so we're going to turn those on now. And if I can get you to just respond by hitting um, the right answer to your question and then, then the submit button um, as soon as you can, that would be great. So. Question number one is, have you visited Oregon? Yes, you loved it. Not yet, it's on your bucket list. Two, have you sold Oregon to your clients? Uh, yes or not yet. And if you haven't done this previously, um, just scroll in the middle to move up and down the questions. Um, and question number three, how would you rate your knowledge of Oregon? Excellent, good, could be better or poor. Then you can hit the submit button. And we're going to wait till about 80% have answered, which is soon. Looking good, guys. Thank you for all those answers. And um, with that, it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce you to our Oregonian today, um, Mr. Greg Eckert, our director from Travel Oregon. Greg, do you want to take us away? Sure. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Um, as you can imagine, it's uh, it's almost happy hour here in Oregon. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon and um, looking ready to have some Oregon craft beer uh, here shortly. But I uh, would love to um, walk you through kind of what Oregon is all about. Um, and we'll do that here um, in just a second. As soon as the Prezzo comes up, I'll start walking through that with you. There it is. Oh, and I'm not gonna tell you who's in that, that costume, but I bet you can imagine and uh, if, you, if we have a little more time someday, I'd love to share the story with you of what Corey is holding there and why and where. It's, it's, it's a cool story. <clears throat> so moving on. Um, again, I'm Greg Eckhart with Travel Oregon. Um, I am the APAC uh, Global Sales Director here. Uh, and um, you will definitely be hearing a lot about Oregon today. Um, but I'll kind of start with geography. So um, if you're not familiar with U.S. geography, Oregon is on the west coast of the United States, uh, right between Washington and California. Um, some people kind of think it's the best thing ab about the west coast, and I, I have to say I agree with them. Our state is made up of seven diverse regions. It has the oceans, the mountains, the valleys, high deserts, cities, and small towns, and almost everything in between. Uh, our discussion today will outline the amazing aspects and key selling points of each region and hopefully give you a glimpse of the unique flair and ambience each of them provide. Um, to make, again, again, kind of keeping along the lines of that, that regionality, that's right where we're all dive in. Um, and that is with 
Oregon's largest city. That's Portland. Uh, Portland is the state's cultural capital. It's famed for energy, diversity, and excellence with music and in the arts. Um, and it's just got an amazing setting. Uh, it's perched about 90 minutes by car inland from the Pacific Ocean. Um, and this beautiful volcanic backdrop of Mount Hood that you can see in the background, that's the state's tallest mountain. Um, Portland kind of offers this quirky and cosmopolitan atmosphere, but with a small town warmth um, that I think you don't find among a lot of other West Coast cities. Um, it's, it's known as the U.S.'s most livable and eco-friendly city. Um, and visitors enjoy, again, all that culture, amazing outdoor activities, great neighborhoods with wonderful cafes and bistros brew pubs, and I'll get into that later, uh, scenic river cruises on the, on the Willamette River through Portland, um, and there's just an, an incredible array of activities to do here. Um, and, and, and again, Mother Nature really is the backdrop of our life here, and we just can't get enough of being outside. Um, now, while local tour operators do provide customized private access to experiences throughout Port Portland and Oregon, for that matter, and working with them is the best and most reliable way to ensure your clients have been delivered your promise of a memorable life-enhancing vacation in Oregon, um, there's other ways to get around Portland as well. Um, you can do that by bicycle, and we have those experience providers for that too. Um, Portland has about 500 kilometers of bikeways, so really the best way to get around um, in this regard in Portland proper is by bike. We have the nation's highest percentage of bike commuters. 7% of the city's population um, commutes by bike um, and a lot of different bike theme events. If you see in the background there, uh, that bridge is the Hawthorne Bridge. It's one of the 12 bridges that spans the Willamette River in Portland. Uh, and that bridge sees about seven to 10,000 commuters a day by bicycle. Uh, another great way, and I kind of mentioned this a little while ago, to see the city is uh, by boat. Um, you can take a cruise on the river there that you see in the fork or the background uh, on a heated river boat with the Portland Spirit. They have karaoke cruises. They have sunset cruises. Um, they have another cruise that runs on the Columbia River. Um, that is a Bigfoot cruise. You probably heard me mention nightlife and cultural uh, activities in Portland three or four times. Um, you can find a lot of adventures uh, throughout Oregon. And I really like to think of Portland as this kind of vivid soundtrack to a lot of those adventures, uh, whether that's from an independent record store. Uh, yeah, we still have them and they even still sell vinyl uh, or independent clubs like the Doug Fir, which you see pictured here, the Mississippi uh, Rose Theater, Alberta Rose Theater, or uh, outdoor events and festivals as well. So while Portland is uh, Oregon's cultural hub, it's also known to both sprawl sprawling wilderness uh, in Forest Park, you can see that in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, and also the world's smallest park uh, or dedicated park, that's Mills End there. Uh, Portland really does offer kind of a breath of fresh air when it comes that way. There are more than 200 parks uh, within our city limits um, from forests to marshlands, trails, and even skateboard parks, of course. And rails. We're also home to the oldest officially continuously operated public rose test garden in the United States. Um, it's just about 10 minutes from downtown Portland in Washington Park. It offers great views of Mount Hood and the city. Uh, and uh, that garden itself has about 10,000 rose bushes. So there's just a variety of roses going. Starting about now, uh, everything has really started to bloom uh, from now until sometimes even into October, depending on how the weather is. They have a great gift shop there, too, if you have somebody in your life that is a, a gardener or a rose enthusiast. It's a good place to bring back a locally made gift. Okay, so I keep joking with Corey because this image um, isn't necessarily the best image I could come up with, but I felt like it really kind of gives you the breadth of what the beer scene is like in Portland. Um, it's, 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 it's difficult to capture in one photo. Um, we have more craft breweries per capita than any other city in the U.S. Uh, we have an enormous beer scene, as I said, different styles of beers, tasting profiles and ABVs. Um, and it's 
at last count, there were about 77 breweries in Portland and 177 in the region. That doesn't include tap houses, which are really great for tasting. Um, what you're seeing here is Basecamp, which is its own brewery uh, and offering a variety of handles, obviously, on different, different types, different flavors. One of the more interesting beers they do is a s'more stout. Uh, and if you order that there in the facility, they actually bring it with a toasted marshmallow that they toast right there at the bar so you get to watch that. So you can, as you can imagine, there's a lot of different ways to do that. So um, people call them beer cations. Don't have to have a lot of planning or, you know, anything in effect, really, because there are tour operators that provide services to do that. Um, winter time is really a good time to visit um, for craft beer. You get a lot of dark beers going on and the brewers have a chance to experiment more with different styles that they may not be usually dealing with in the spring and the summer and the fall. Um, Portland has a lot of nicknames. Um, Beervana, Rose City, Bridgetown, just to name a few. And there's just a lot to do here. Um, we have a very unique place in a unique city in Portland with world-renowned chefs and hundreds of food carts in Portland. Art, again, in the theaters and outside on the street. We have the world's largest independent bookstore at Powell's Books. They sell online, too. Um, and it just Portland really isn't your, your typical city. And if it wasn't so different, it wouldn't be Portland. It would be, it'd be a different place. So um, definitely the great kind of jumping off and base camp for adventures. So moving on into the next region of Oregon, um, we're going to talk about the Oregon coast on the Pacific Ocean. Um, consequently, Oregon is a fine state for a road trip, uh, whether that's a continuation of a journey through California or just as a destination by itself. Uh, Highway 101, which you can see a portion of pictured here, pictured here uh, follows the Oregon coast throughout, passing in the south uh, near the Redwood Forest and then in the north uh, on the Columbia River and Columbia Bar. Uh, we've got about nine lighthouses on the coast, um, which you can see here. And um, it's just an incredible place to visit. There's a variety of landscape to see on the coast, um, whether that's windswept shoreline, um, sand dunes, which I'll talk about later. Again, I mentioned state parks. We have some of the most amazing state parks in the world. Little bustling harbor towns or even secluded beaches that are populated by sea stacks like this. Um, there's a lot to offer for anybody that wants to visit the coast for sightseeing, um, even even from folks that are so connected to the ocean like you guys down uh, down under. Um, and it really doesn't get much more coastal than this region. Um, and, and one of the reasons we like to say that is that uh, we had a pioneering beach bill um, making all 584 kilometers of Oregon's coastline free and open to the public. We call it the People's Coast. Um, and through the next couple of slides, you'll see why. Um, it's very, very easy to get up co close and personal. Um, in this case, um, you have the opportunity to go crabbing in a place like Kelly's Marina. Um, catch your crab right there on the dock or from one of their boats and then bring it right back up into their little camp and they'll cook it for you and help you clean it and show you the best way to get all the meat out of it and enjoy the, the, the uh, crab that you just caught. Um, there's also razor clamming, all kinds of activities like that. So it's it's incredible to have the opportunity to connect to these experiences and connect your clients to these experiences on the coast. Uh, the coast is also a great way to see sea life, not just in the Oregon Coast Aquarium like you see here in Newport, but also uh, in places like Depot Bay at their whale watching center, which is also a state park. Uh, we have a pod of gray whales that that makes their home off of the Oregon coast, but we also see part of the gray whale migration down um, north and south from Alaska to Mexico. So they, they come by, you see babies, all kinds of great sea life, sea lions, you name it, we've got seals as well. So there's a lot of uh, different wildlife to see, whether that's again in the, in the aquarium or just in nature. Another really amazing experience on the Oregon coast is ride, riding a fat bike. Um, the Oregon Dunes National Recreation Pro Area provides an opportunity for all skill levels. Uh, on the coast, you can find flat terrain or strenuous terrain, freestyle or off-road. And again, the coast is kind of dotted with fat bike rental shop and even local experience guides and specialists that are eager to share their favorite spots with, with you as well. Um, but the dunes aren't just for uh, cycling. Uh, 
uh, or, or sandboarding, which I'll mention in a moment. But the, the dunes is 64 kilometers of this rolling sand dunes and mountains that tower even sometimes 152 meters in the air. And it's the largest concentration of sand dunes in the U.S. and unique, really, to most coastlines in the world. Um, Oregonians and travelers alike take advantage of this uh, sandy spot on boards. As I mentioned, the sport of sandboarding was invented in Florence on the Oregon Central Coast. Um, and that's really where that kind of longboard skateboarding meets sand dunes um, and snowboarding. So, But also there are tour operators and rental companies that provide ATV tours or ATV rentals, as you see here, that you can drive on the coast yourself. And, and that is an experience you won't forget. It's a blast. Um, one particular section of the Oregon coastline that you really won't want your clients to miss is on the south coast. Uh, that's at the Samuel H. Borden and Scenic Corridor. Um, this corridor is a 19-kilometer long forested linear park with rugged, steep coastline interrupted by these beautiful little sand beaches. And it was named in honor of a man named Samuel Boardman, who was the first Oregon State Park superintendent. So you're probably sensing a theme. Um, Oregonians and, and, and the travelers that visit here are blessed with a stewardship of the land um, and this connection to wanting everybody to have access to it. So they have that same stewardship and kin to the land that they're visiting. Um, so him and others of his generation really did, again, felt like sharing um, the coastline sh um, was the best way to do that. You'll find 300-year-old 300 300 Sitka spruce in this area, um, as well as the amazing arch rock and natural bridges, which you can, you can see some of those uh, arch, uh, some of those sea stacks there. Um, incredible, incredible spot on the coast. So moving on to Mount Hood and the uh, Columbia River Gorge. Um, this is where Oregon's tallest mountain meets our mightiest river, the Columbia. So the Mount Hood, uh, Mount Hood is what you see there and it meets the river. Um, and there's beautiful places to hike among towering trees and waterfalls, lots of farms in the area. So there's great farm experiences where you can go and visit people that, that grow their own peaches and pears in the Hood River Valley, um, rent a cabin, things like that. There's also um, incredible winter activities there, um, whether that's snowshoeing or downhill skiing or cross-country skiing. Uh, Mount Hood is home to six ski areas and the nation's longest night ski uh, at Ski Bowl. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Mount Hood is the fourth highest peak in that Cascade uh, range, and it's just a great place to do skiing and snowboarding. Um, one of the spots that I love on the left is a ski bowl as part of their night skiing. If you're not an avid skier or if you're done skiing for the day, they offer a thing called cosmic tubing, um, which is um, sledding and inner tubing under the lights with music and um, with a ski lift so you don't have to hike your, uh, your sled back up to the top of the hill. Mount Hood is also home, again, to Timberline Lodge. Uh, that was pictured in the previous slide. Timberline Lodge is an incredible lodge, ski in, ski out. Um, but it's also home to Silcox Hut, which is kind of a miniature recreation of the lodge. Beautiful, beautiful hut, doing a lot of um, great private events up there. So if you have folks that are looking for an interesting place for um, a honeymoon, big birthday that they're celebrating if they want to celebrate with family that's a great place to do that and then you can go and spend the night in the in the silk oxide or down at timberland lodge so i mentioned the columbia river um, what you're looking at here is the columbia river gorge the columbia river gorge was designated a national scenic area it's the largest one in america and it was done so for good reason um, you'd be really hard pressed to find better views um, than these. Uh, the Western Gorge is really pretty incredible. You can see Crown Point in the upper left of this photo. Um, that really gives you a front row seat to that mighty Columbia River um, as it unfurls and cuts toward the Pacific Ocean through the Cascade Mountains. Um, but the gorge is also home to an array of stunning waterfalls. Um, so they spill from these basalt cliffs along the gorge. Um, lining the historic highway there. The, the, the falls that you see here are the Multnomah Falls on the right and La Tourelle Falls on the left. Um, pretty amazing. La Tourelle is a waterfall that if you want to, and I've done it myself, 
you can stand underneath this. There's a pool underneath here that's about knee deep, um, and it's darn cold, but it's an incredible experience to stand under this this enormous waterfall, um, just as knowing it's going to continue a journey onto the Pacific Ocean through the Columbia River. All that said, you heard me mention farms. Um, the Columbia Gorge isn't just about that beautiful scenery. It's also about connecting to the farms, landscapes, and again, beers. I saw somebody shout it out. You had me in craft beer. Um, there's plenty of handcrafted beer in this area. Uh, great farm fresh dining. And also thanks to its unique geography, the gorge boasts a world of wine. Um, whether that's Pinot Noir, which we'll talk about here in just a second, uh, and Chardonnay in the western hills of the gorge, to the Eastern Gorge where you find Tempranillo and Syrah and Stryer out there. So there's a lot of and great experiences to connect with these farmers and producers. And easy ways to do that, whether that's through the, the uh, places like the Fruit Loop near Hood River or uh, through some of the farm trails that Travel Oregon has developed. So I talked about wine. Um, and speaking of wine, the Willamette Valley is really the place where the legacy of Oregon Pinot Noir started. Uh, and there's a lot of great ways to build up an appetite, not only for wine, but for great food in that area. Um, whether that's a shiny and sleek um, tasting room or an intimate one. Um, we have, this is Oregon's largest wine region. There are 500 tasting rooms in the Willamette Valley. And in 2016, it was named the Wine Region of the Year by Wine Enthusiast Magazine here in the United States. So it's a big deal. Um, there's great tour operators that provide tours of these hills, whether that's uh, in the Shehala Mountains, the Dundee Hills, uh, or the very famous Eola Amity Hills too. So lots of great ways to connect to the wineries, et cetera. Uh, there is a really kind of a uh, winemakers or vintners secret, as they say, that um, winter is really the best time to visit the valley. Um, the tasting rooms are less busy. Um, the producers have started to unwind a little bit for the year. So that's when people really have the opportunity to possibly connect with a winemaker um, uh, or vineyard manager, you name it. Um, it is a really the best time to get up close and personal with the wineries is winter time. But the Willamette Valley is also a great place to hike. Uh, you can hike through old growth. We'll talk about some of the other waterfalls here in a moment. Um, but there's covered bridges, amazing, beautiful little towns and back countries and, you know, kind of sprinkled among the wine country. Um, they're tight. The people in these communities are tight knit and they're very talented at what they do. Um, and, and they love to share their story. I think you'll find that, especially visiting in winter, uh, our winter. Um, if you go into a winery, you'll definitely probably um, be needing to excuse yourself because you'll have just talked so much that it's like, all right, I need to see another winery. That's often uh, what, what goes down. Um, and again, the, the, the valley is home to some amazing beauty. Um, what you're looking at here is Silver Falls State Park. People call it the crown jewel of the Oregon State Park system. And once you visit here, you'll really know why. Um, it is the standout scenic treasure that puts Oregon really on our international straight stage. And um, it's, it sits in the foothills of the Cascade Mountains, about an hour east of our state capital in Salem. And it is the largest state park and one of the most popular. Uh, but it's quite amazing. You can walk behind this waterfall that you see in the image. Um, and it's nearly a paved trail. It's very easy to access and incredible, incredible walk. All right, excuse me a second. Okay. Uh, the Willamette Valley also um, hosts some of our more interesting adventures for the young and the young at heart. Um, Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum is there. It's best known as the home of the Spruce Goose or the world's largest flying boat. Um, it's also home to a water park and IMAX theater. And so it's very, very popular um, with young and young at heart, as I said. So they have about 200 different historic aircraft, spacecraft things that it's on display there. Um, the other spot that, that is amazing is in Albany. Um, it's the home of the Albany Carousel Museum. Um, and it's got a historic and whimsical herd of animals. You can see that from the, uh, the salmon that you, that's there pictured. Um, those are all painstakingly carved by hand. 
um, from the museum's team of volunteers. So they have a group of volunteers that are just enamored with, with carousels and the history behind them. And, and it is one of the biggest draws in this region. Uh, and it's amazing. It, take a spin on one of these animals for $2 and um, enjoy the, the artistry of it. Uh, one of the more fascinating features of that museum is a workshop. So they have volunteers there that are carving and painting animals uh, in the wooden details within the animals. So it's a real rare chance to get up close and personal to see um, how this is done. And it's, it's quite amazing. So next, we're getting there. Uh, the central part of Oregon, or central Oregon as we call it, is a high desert playground. Um, it's filled with sunny skies and snowy peaks and all kinds of adventures. Um, some of the more amazing ones are rafting, like you see here on the Deschutes, um, or skiing, incredible skiing at Mount Bachelor. Fishing is incredible, and it's also home to several world-renowned golf courses. Um, about 35 golf courses there in Central Oregon, including, including resorts that are amazing and perfect for that. Um, it's also home to Bend, Oregon, which is another kind of craft brew mecca in its own right, but also an outdoor adventure capital, whether that's skiing or snowboarding uh, at Mount Bachelor uh, in the Cascades, which you see pictured here in the Cascade Mountains, uh, kayaking on the Deschutes or rafting, enjoy, enjoying the Bend Ale Trail, or just mountain biking outside of Bend. There's a whole lot to do. Um, I mentioned skiing, um, but there's also dog sledding tours out of Bend, which are phenomenal. Nighttime uh, snowshoeing, too, and like moonlight snowshoeing. That's one of the most amazing experiences I've ever uh, had in my life. Phenomenal. Okay, moving on to Southern Oregon. Uh, you're looking at La, excuse me, Tokati Falls here. Uh, beautiful, beautiful waterfall on the Umpqua River in, in uh, south, uh, I think southwestern Oregon. Um, it's home to the wild scenic Rogue River, which is this, the river that this waterfall is on. Um, and again, amazing line there to uh, talk about that in just a moment. Southern Oregon is really sparsely populated, but it's forested and very peaceful, and it's home to Crater Lake National Park. It's our only national park, uh, and it spreads out around the deepest lake in the United States. Crater Lake is actually the remains of a volcano caldera, so Mount Mazama, which was a huge volcano, collapsed about 7,000 years ago, and that's continually filled with snowmelt. Crater Lake is not fed by a natural spring. It's, it's fed by snow melt. So as you can imagine, it does get a lot of snow um, in the, in the wintertime. That said, it is open year round. Um, in fact, during winter, there are complimentary snowshoe rentals as well as a daily uh, snowshoe hike with a park ranger. So it's, it's a really cool place to visit in the winter um, because you can, can really kind of you know, have the place to yourself on some days. Southern Oregon is also home to Ashland, Oregon. Um, Ashland is the home of the oldest Shakespeare festival in the United States, uh, but also beautiful hotels. Lithia Park, which is one of my favorite locations in the state. Beautiful thing, place to visit in the, the autumn. Um, just wonderful, wonderful flowers. Or, excuse me, leaf changing. Oregon also has a long boating history with a myriad of lakes and rivers around the state. And as I mentioned, the wild and scenic river, uh, Rogue River, which you see here, um, is a really, really cool way to get around. Um, you get stunning scenery, scenery, lots of wildlife, different stories about Oregon history. And then with this company, Hellgate Jet Boats, they have a variety of experiences. So you can go out on a dinner cruise to their private cabin in the woods, um, which hosts several hundred people, beautiful cabin. Um, or taking a um, slower trip where it's just mostly focused on uh, looking at wildlife. There's also on the same river out of Grants Pass, Oregon, a paddle pub, which is a, uh, exactly what it sounds like. It's a pub that you paddle on down the river and enjoy Southern Oregon uh, craft beer. So again, that, that, the spirit of that goes on and on throughout our state. Southern Oregon is also home to its own incredible wine and culinary scene in places like Central Point, um, which you see pictured there uh, where Rogue Creamery Blue Cheese is, uh, as is Ledger David Cellars. 
Uh, nearby is Jackson, Oregon, or excuse me, Jacksonville, Oregon, which is dubbed one of America's top 10 coolest small towns. Uh, this 1850s mining town really does offer kind of a window to the past. And it may even remind you of Australia's uh, own historic gold rushes. Um, I love the Jacksonville Tavern, which you see pictured here. Um, I've even had my hair cut in the oldest barber shop in Oregon, which is just a couple of doors down from the tavern. Um, then again, too, there's a lot to do in Klamath Falls. There's a lot of great hiking around there. There's also one of the oldest birding festivals in the United States. So if you're interested or if you have clients that are interested in seeing more than 350 bird species in one place, that's a great place to do it. Uh, it's worth mentioning that any of these towns are an excellent base camp for adventures at Crater Lake and beyond. Love to provide suggestions or recommendation for lodging and many other experiences in, in anywhere that we've been talking about, whether that's sightseeing or dining. Happy to do that and want to do that for you. And last but not least is, is Oregon's corner of the Wild West. That is Eastern Oregon. Uh, out, out in Eastern Oregon, wide open skies and sagebrush plains with craggy mountain ranges really kind of claim the landscape. Uh, it's a vast outdoor playground. Uh, there's skiing there as well. Great fishing, incredible wildlife, whether that's pronghorn or elk. Um, and also uh, uh, a really great place to connect with the history of the Western United States. Um, wagon ruts from the Oregon Trail can still be viewed there. Um, just outside of Baker City in Eastern Oregon. And it's pretty amazing to think about people making that journey across the United States. Eastern Oregon is also, as I said, home to cowboy country. Uh, Pendleton is probably the most well-known. Um, and whether that's saddles, hats, or boots, or beer, or whiskey, or vodka, Pendleton's craft culture is really well regarded. It's one of the craft kind of maker cultures in the state. And we know the cities have seen a rise of that kind of artists and driven businesses in the past 10 years, but Pendleton makers were doing it long before it was cool. And they're still around to show you that. Um, Eastern Oregon is also home to one of Oregon's seven wonders, the Painted Hills, um, which I'll show you a better photo of that later, but um, it's an amazing place to visit. Kind of changes color throughout the day. Uh, in, the, in the morning, if you visit, you get these kind of golds and blacks. And then the after, late afternoon, you get kind of yellows. Um, it's, it's an incredible place. The hospitality in Eastern Oregon is phenomenal. Um, there's people um, that have lived on that land for more than 10,000 years, and they share their culture with, with everybody at the Tomaslik Cultural Institute outside of Pendleton. It's an incredible, incredible First Nations museum. And it wouldn't be really worth mentioning Pendleton here if I didn't discuss the Pendleton Roundup. The Pendleton Roundup is the third largest rodeo uh, in the United States. It's or, uh, North America, I should say, excuse me. But it's a great time. It's held each September in Pendleton. Wonderful rodeo, good party. You know, but any time is a good year to visit Eastern Oregon and Pendleton. Um, so if you need any more inspiration or ideas, um, go to our website www.travelorgan.com and the photo you're seeing there I see somebody says oh wow what area is this this is the Painted Hills in Eastern Oregon so there was a smaller photo of that uh, out by um, and I can uh, hell I'll answer another question here I guess to Hickory or no yeah for sure somebody had asked what wildlife is there in Oregon bears moose what regions so we have elk uh, there are bears here in parts of the state. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, a lot of sea life. Uh, we have elk, we have deer, we have pronghorn, um, you name it. We have a lot of wildlife. No moose, though, that I'm aware of. Awesome. Well, um, thanks, Greg. Uh, hopefully we've given all of you some helpful information on what makes Oregon so special. Um, before you go, uh, we have a few more questions to test your knowledge of Oregon. Um, and so hopefully many of you have been pay paying attention. By correctly answering the questions, you'll stand a chance to win one of two Discover Oregon family prize packages. We're going to send those out to you from our office. So please answer the questions that po have popped up in the middle of your screen and um, do so as soon as possible. No Googling, please. Uh, this is all based on the presentation or your knowledge, general knowledge of Oregon. Um, question one, the 1985 American adventure comedy film, The Goonies, was filmed in Portland, Astoria, Salem, or Eugene? 
Question two, what is the name of Oregon's only national park and the deepest lake in the USA? Open all year round, as Greg mentioned. Is it Crater Lake, Timothy Lake, Diamond Lake, or Deep Lake? And question number three, what is the tallest mountain in Oregon? Is it Mount Hood, Mount Bachelor, Mount Jefferson, or Mount Rainier? What is the tallest mountain in Oregon? So again, go ahead and answer those right on the screen and then hit the submit button. Um, and thanks again, Greg, and thanks to all of you for joining us today. Um, if you haven't already, please sign up for next week's webinars, which are available through the links we'll follow up with. Um, there'll be one on American Airlines, our airline partner for Sell Your Way, which is quite exciting for them to be presenting with us. Cool. Um, we'll also be in touch tomorrow with our prize winner announcements and more food recipes from some of our chefs in Oregon for you at home. In the meantime, we're going to finish um, with one final video, Oregon Slightly Exaggerated. So please enjoy that, um, and we'll be following up with you, and thanks, everyone, for your time today.